Hey, it's Michael Watson here. I'm a composer and music producer and I'm teaching you through the Ableton Live manual. And today I'm going to be telling you about chain lists and zones. If this is your first introduction to device racks and chains, I suggest you look at this video because this is a little bit more advanced. So let's dive right in. Okay, so I'll be showing you with audio and MIDI tracks, but uh, first I'm going to show you an audio track because it's a little bit simpler. I'm just going to go find a sample. Magic in your eye. Okay, I think I'm going to go with this one. I quite like it. So the next thing you need to do to learn about chains and zones is you need to get your audio effects rack out. But literally, it's called audio effects rack. So this is a special little rack. I'm going to tell you more about it just now. But I'm just going to drag a device in. And um, these little controls over here, this is your macro control. I'm going to tell you all about macro controls in my next video. This here is your chain list. And um, this is how we're going to set up our chains. And the last one is just to show and hide the device. Magic in your eye. Magic in your eyes. Say magic in your eyes. Okay, so this over here is your chain, and this is what I'll be explaining you how to do. It will enable you to create parallel chains so that you'll have two chains kind of going and you can choose which one to go. So that's really cool. I'm just going to make the effect sound a little bit more prominent. So I actually want so another effect. I would like to add a reverb, and instead of putting it after the auto pan, I'm putting it underneath, thus creating a parallel chain so that my signal will go through both of them at the same time. Over here I can change the level of each respective chain. You might be thinking, how is this different to ascend? Um, well, this is what I'm going to explain now on this chain. So you can actually move these two little rectangles around, and wherever this orange cursor is, that's the chain that's going to be active. So you can flip through the two different chains like this. You can even use a MIDI controller. You can map it to your keyboard. But uh, you can also use your left and right arrows That's on your keyboard. That's exactly what I was doing now. Okay, I'm also going to add a third chain. As things get exciting, the more parallel chains you've got. I'm just going to EQ it up quickly. All right, so now I've got those three effects, and I want to actually jump between the three of them, depending where in the phrase magic in your eyes we are, and in so doing I can actually kind of make the sample sound a hell of a lot cooler. Okay, so I hope that you get the idea, and if you combine this with those macro controls, you can create some crazy cool things. All right, so let's talk about the MIDI effects chains. So I'm going to go to... A MIDI track and I'm just going to quickly create a chord over here which I'm going to be using over the sample. I'm changing the velocities of those two notes, it's going to be important. So we're going to search for a MIDI effect track now instead of the audio effect track and we put it before your MIDI instrument. I've already got one here so I'm just going to delete the one I just put there and I'm going to add an arpeggiator. Okay, so here you can see my chain list, and I put another effect over there as well, so... This is what they sound like together, both playing at the same time. You can see I've got the normal chain, I've also got a velocity and a key mapping system, and I'm going to be explaining those three to you shortly. So this is just where the chain works, you can change both of those a little chained events and flip through like you did with the audio file. Okay, so this is the velocity and the values at the top run from 1 to 27 and those represent your MIDI values. So you can see that these two of here value uh, 45 and 126 respectively. You can just click on them at the velocity at the bottom and the number will pop up. And so when I go back to this velocity list, I can just drag this red area to the specific values that I want them so that if the velocities, lol, if the velocities fall in these areas, so the bottom one goes up to value like 73-ish, and the other chain is all the velocity values above, depending on what the velocity is, it'll choose the respective chain. So you can hear the little arpeggiator at the back. 
It's softer because the velocity is lower on that one. Okay, so let me just uh, reset those velocities. I'm going to be telling you about the key function now. I'm just going to set that back. Okay, so with the key function, also it's similar. So the notes at the top represents all the notes that the MIDI values are playing from the chord. And I can click and drag. So I'm going to have the gap there. So I'm going to click and drag these little blue highlighted areas to represent which notes I want to go through which chain. So the top chain is going to be activated for the lower notes in the chord and the bottom chain is going to be activated with the higher notes. So this is just both samples together. It's just a, a quick demonstration of what you could do. And here I'm just playing around with the magic in your eyes. Okay, there are a couple extra tips I want to tell you about. So you can create fades. And uh, basically what these fades do is they determine how the chains react when you get to the border. So if you get to the end of the key over there, it's going to start fading out the effect. Without the fade, the effect is going to fade out naturally when it hits the end of the chain, but with that fade, it's going to start fading out the closer it gets to the end of that line. So I hope that makes sense. If that explanation was weird, let me know. I will try and write it in the comments if you guys want. And that over here is auto select. When auto select is on, then the chain that's having signal passed through is going to highlight. So these little blue highlights that are happening, they're automatic because of auto select. You can also take your chains and drag them into empty regions and create a new track with that chain on it. Like most other devices, you can also save presets. You can also use HotSwap. So honestly, out of all these tutorials, I suggest you really check out Chains and Zones. You can make some incredibly cool effects and have fun with sound design. If you guys want a more detailed look at this, please do let me know. And in the next video, I'm going to be looking at drum racks, also in a little bit more detail than you might be used to. And I definitely won't forget about telling you all about those macro controls. Okay, but that's enough for me. I'm going to stop talking. Thanks so much for watching, guys. 